Okay, so um, let's real quick just talk about part writing when it comes to these descending fifth progressions. Now, this should be nothing new because we've done descending fifths in part writing because it's just a cadence, right? It's 5-1. Um, so there's a couple different ways we can do that. Now, remember when we're doing these sequences, and actually let me talk about that for just a minute. A sequence... Uh, is a music term. Uh, we use it in music to mean a series of chords that follow a similar pattern. So a sequence can be um, a series of chords moving along by fifth, uh, descending fifths. That can be a sequence. So a sequence like this um, is not necessarily a cadence. So we don't need to worry too much about if we want it to be a perfect authentic cadence, an imperfect cadence, anything like that. However, if you want this thing to really hit home, if you want a descending fifth progression to really land, there's two rules that you want to follow. One is that you want to keep that common tone, right? Every one of these has a common tone. So let's go to, let's just keep this simple and let's just go to C major here. And what are we in? 4-4? Four, four? Good. So let's do a 5-1 in C major. So let's go. Oh, and I'm going to do it with the right voicing. So I need to put, I need to do this. D, G, and let's go G and B. I don't know why I can't put in the right note on the first try today. And then let's go to our one. Keeping that common tone, which is the G in this case. Okay, so what we have here is a 5-1 G to C. Okay, 5 to 1. Uh, the G stays the same, right? We keep that common tone as much as we can, and we have the other G giving us a good five, one. So the two rules that I like to think about if you're gonna do a long sequence of these in part writing is keep the common tone the same, and if you want, you don't have to, but if you want, give us a good root motion uh, five, one to really hit that home that we're doing a descending fifth sequence. Now, sometimes this is gonna be five, one, sometimes it's gonna be uh, one, four, cause you're gonna have to go up, right? Uh, so let's do it actually, let's go to the next one. So the next one from C down to, if we treat this C as five, the next chord is going to be F, right? So what can we keep in common? It's gonna be the C that we keep in common. So not this C, we want this C to go up to F. This C, let's keep as a common tone. And then these two notes, we're just gonna move the closest possible way. So F and, well, we could go F and F if we wanted. We could do that. Um, what do I have? F, C, I'm missing an A. So I really should move that up to an A and then I'm just gonna switch my voices here. There we go. So that's okay. Um, I don't see any problems there. So now we've made it to F, right? We've kept that common tone. We've given ourselves a good root motion from one to five, even though it's going up a fourth, but that's okay. Let's do one more just for fun. If F is five, then one is going to be B flat. Now we're getting into, we're getting a, a little chromatic here. Uh, so this is actually kind of interesting. So if we're sticking to the key of C, it's going to be B. But if we want to be totally chromatic about it, it would be B flat. But let's stick to the key of C. So it would be B. 
So it would be B, D, and F. So F is going to stay the same there. So let's put that on layer two here. And then layer one is going to be F. And I need to get rid of that. Let's try that again. Actually, let's do this. Let's keep this F as our common tone. This one's gonna go down to B and it has to be on layer two. Okay, that's layer two. The C, what's gonna be our closest uh, note? Probably B. So let's lower that to a B on layer one. And then this F, we're gonna keep as our common tone because we have B, D, F. And we want layer two for that. And now this A could go up to B, would be the closest note. But now I have B, B, F, B. That's not great. So if I moved this B, I'm missing a D. So if I move this up to D, what I wanna check is this is going up and this is going up. Did I make a parallel fifth or octave? C to A is a six, D to B is a six. So we're fine there, we have a parallel six, totally okay. So now I have my sequence, right? Um, my rule works because I have common tone between these two, and then I have common tone between these two, and then I have common tone between these two. And I keep having my five, one, five, one, five, one pattern. Let's hear it. Something is very wrong there. G, B, D, G. So this is what happens when I take a break for a night and I come back open the same file and start filming again. Um, something you probably all saw me doing, but I didn't notice it. And the way my computer's set up, I can't actually hear the notes being entered as I enter them. I know you can, but I can't. So I didn't notice that I was in trouble cleft down here until I hit play right there. So what I'm gonna do is drop a bass clef there. Actually, let's drop it right there. And now I need to transpose these notes down. Transpose down by interval. Perfect octave down. I'm gonna have to do that one more time. Transpose down perfect octave, were a third low from doing that. So let's go like that. And okay, now we're back. There we go. So watch your clefts. I, I that's the second time I think I've done that in this series of classes. Um, uh, it's it's just a, a dumb thing. I should have noticed that while I was working, but sometimes you don't when you're working on programs like this. Okay, but now we have it right. Um, so five one five one five one. Remember to give us a good bass motion so that we really hear the 5-1 sequence and keep that common tone. 